All right, guys, we're back on the 850J again. Um, this is the second part of a video. You watched the first part. We were tearing down the engine and actually tearing it down and pulling it out of the tractor at the same time. So not the same time, but can't do both at the same time, can we? Anyway, we pulled the motor out and then we pulled it apart. The reason was it had a bunch of blow by. You'll see in the first video, um, they didn't have an air filter in it and the intake boot was off of it. So we showed you in the first video, um, here's the old piston liners. You can see down it's all shiny. It shouldn't be that way. It should be all cross hashed up and new like these new ones you see here. So you guys see that cross hatch mark. But it ingested too much dust. It had a bunch of blow by. Um, we got the head cleaned up and everything. So we're going to show you these pistons when we buy them actually come loaded in these liners. If you guys aren't familiar with most your diesels anymore, um, they have replaceable cylinder liners. So when they get worn, you just pop the liners out of these holes. There's usually three O rings down there in the bottom that seal them up. Um, one for the oil, a couple for the oil and the coolant. So but anyway, we're going to keep on throwing connecting rods over there. We'll show you how those work. But these John Deere ones, this is a 6090 uh, John Deere engine, 9 liter. It only had like 900 and some hours on it. So not a lot of time. For some reason, the Army messed it up like they do a lot of stuff. I probably shouldn't have said that. Anyway, um, we're going to put the rods on there. The John Deere engines, like I was saying, they come preloaded to pistons. Depends on the manufacturer, but John Deere and aftermarket companies already put the piston rings. The pistons come inside the liner, so we'll just slide them up a little bit and uh, we're going to pop that snap ring out. We'll lube up that uh, wrist pin and we're going to put the original rod back on it. we got it all cleaned up and stuff, so number out this way mm -hmm. and that's that you put that down in there and we'll get another one out I'll show you guys how they come packaged Open that up, Scott. So here's the O-ring kits, and I'll show you guys for the liners. Um, three different colors, so you can't mess them up. I believe the green one goes up top, the orange one's in the middle, and the white's in the bottom. You can't interchange them because some are made for coolant and some are made for the engine oil from the bottom. So it's going to come loaded like that. There's a new piston inside the liner with the piston rings and everything on it. So we're going to keep on installing all these on there. We got three more rods left to do. And then I think we're going to roll it over and put uh, put the main bearings in it because we've not done that yet. Once we get the main bearings in it, we'll drop the pistons and the liners in it. All right, we got all the main caps off. We're rolling out a bearing one at a time. We already got this one done. We're rolling them out. We'll show you how we do that. We're going to roll one in right now. We got all of our parts laid out here. The ones uh, with the holes go in. Hold that. So the ones with the holes go in because the oil comes from the block and feeds the bearing that way. They go down in the block. We'll lube this up here. I got a little tang here. Tang lines up on there. So. Scott's gonna, I'll spin him in by hand as far as we can. And he's gonna spin the motor over. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this holding the camera. I'll have to help that one out. Okay, we got that one in. We're gonna get the, um, Main cap next, put the bearing in it. What number is that? We got one, two, that's number three. 
And we're looking for number three over here. There it is. Make sure it's clean. So we're gonna put one without the holes in the main cap here. Got the little tang right here. Make sure it's all sitting in there right. Got new rod bolts. These bolts are a torque to, what's that, torque to yield they call this? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put some oil in there. The one time use is what we're trying to say. Um, make sure that's in there all the way. You need to dip those bolts in that oil there. These all have arrows on these main caps that says F, it means forward. We got number three. And drop the bolts in there. So what we'll do right now, we'll um, run them in lightly with the impact. We'll come back through and do the torque sequence. I've got a shoulder I have to pull down into, even. Let's snug that up for now. We're gonna keep doing the rest of them here. I'm gonna spin on this one. Oh. Ready? Another trick you can do too, you see this hole, um, these holes here, you actually can take a cotter pin, and if we have problems with one. What you do, you smash the head over so when it spins around, it actually catches that bearing and will spin the bearing out. There's another way to do it, but I don't have to use that. I don't like to. There's that one. I'm checking every thing as we go. That one looks pretty good. He's going to uh, spin it around and wipe that off. That'll be good. See, that crank looks really nice in there. So we're going to keep... Uh, Doing this here, we're not going to bore you. We'll set you up on time lapse. We're going to get the rest of these in there. All right, guys, I want to stop the time lapse there a second. We had this, this is actually the thrust bearing. It's got thrust um, bearings on each side of the crank. It's on the number five journal. And it's not wanting to roll out too easy. So I told you sometimes we'll use a cotter pin. That's a normal cotter pin there, right? So I took this one over in the vise and actually hammered it down flat. So what you can do, you can put these in the oil hole there. Scott's gonna crank the thing around real carefully. Make sure I get that sitting in there, all right? With any luck, it should crank it out. See that? Spin it right out. Keep going. Okay. Just like that. Nice little handy, handy tool, so. You don't want to pull the whole crank out of something and just spin the bearings out. A lot of times, the other ones I've been doing by hand, but that one, since I had the thrust bearings on it and everything's low hours and tight, it's a little struggle, but a tip for you guys, if you're looking at building something like this, you can get your cotter pin and roll the bearings out. All right, so Scott's torquing these to 90 foot-pounds on these main bolts. And so after that, they got to turn 120 degrees. So if you get some all double checked here, I'm going to go through and mark the uh, heads of the bolt with the silver marker here. Marked, we're going to advance them 120 degrees. And then we will roll the engine back over. And uh, we'll drop the pistons and the sleeves in. We've got to put the liner o rings in first. And they actually use Dawn soap to lubricate those up. We'll show you that here next. 
All right, guys, we're putting the last piston in. We got the other ones already in the engine. I just got one more left here. I was gonna show you. In there, I've already put one O-ring in. There's um, two O-rings in the block and one goes on the liner, but the middle one's orange and the bottom one's either white or black. It holds the oil back. So we're gonna go ahead and get this other one. White one in here. You gotta lubricate these in Dawn soap. Make sure they're all lubricated good. This is what seals the coolant and the oil back. These are what they call wet sleeves. The coolant runs around the sleeve, are replaceable, like I was telling you earlier. We'll get that in there. I'll bring the piston and liner over next. I'm not sure it's going to clear in there. What is it? Yeah, I think it's not clear. I'm leaving. Come down farther. You ready? Yeah. So we're just going to use this rubber hammer and tap this liner all the way in. That's it. You ready for the piston? Yeah. Slide this down. So if you notice we got um, keeper bolts holding these liners in so they don't uh, come out when we're turning the motor over, torquing the main bearings and stuff, we'll just put a bolt in there, snug to hold them down. And we'll come over here and get us the rod cap and two more bolts. Put some oil in it. Put oil on the bolts too so they get the proper torque. We'll get those all run down, get those all torqued, all the main bearings torqued. And then we'll be ready to probably we either put the oil, the oil pump and oil pan on probably next, then we'll put the head on. All right, we got all the rod bolts torqued. The, they have three sweet sequences. The first one was 27 foot-pounds, then they torqued to 90 foot-pounds, and then they turn 90 to 100 degrees past that. So we've got them all torqued and turned. Next thing we're going to do is put the put the oil pick, uh, pump and pick up and stuff on there in the oil pan so I'm not going to bore you guys with watching that because you've seen me take it off so and after that we'll put the head on all right we got the oil pump on uh, torqued all the bolts to spec I believe these are at 54 foot pounds and those are at 40 foot pounds on the pickup crossover tubes you notice I got a little bit of silicone where it goes over on these front aluminum seal housings just in case there's any little imperfection because that is a different piece of metal so we'll set this gasket on here and Randy's out cleaning the oil pan. He's about done with that. We'll stick it on there. Get the bolts all torqued down on it. Then we'll uh, spin the motor over and start putting the head on it. Gasket all laid in place. All right, we're going to get the pan on.
All right, guys, we got the head over here on the bench. We've been pulling out the valves. There's four in each cylinder, two intake and two exhaust. Been pulling those out and inspecting them. We've been looking great so far. So we've got a ring compressor here, and we're compressing the uh, spring, and they got these two halves that come off that little groove right there. I don't know if you can see it, so I'm going to back this off. Spring comes off. This is an exhaust valve here. See, they look really good. We're going to clean those up. And then repeat. He's putting uh, some on the inside right there. There's actually a valve stem seal that seals up. Seals up around that valve. So he's going to put new ones in. There's a little rubber seal on there. So it helps some of the oil running down and whatnot. We're pulling each one out and inspecting them. I don't know if you guys can see that. That one's still got all the nice machine marks on it. Indication of low hours and everything. Valve surface looks real good. It's got some black spots. It's not pitting. It's just from sitting. So Everything's looking good so far. I'm going to dip this in a little oil. Scott's got the seal on there. Spring on, we'll compress it. Just gonna put those two little halves on. Good. So the spring pressure is the only thing that holds those two little halves on. And we're gonna keep on trucking down the line. We'll set you guys up here in time lapse. You can watch a little bit. We got all the valves in. Scott's actually tapping to make sure everything's seated. Knocking off injector covers. Trying to make sure you hear that good pop noise. I think that's that's it on this. We're gonna clean that up a little bit more. Um, I just want to pull it head apart and make sure we had good valves. The valves look ex excellent in it, so cleaned them all up. Put new valve stem seals and everything. All right, we got the hood hooked up. I'm gonna set her on there. Spin her around. Hold up. So he's got a little crossover tube. We got a new one here with O rings. We got them soaked up. We got to set her on.
good? All right, got the head on there. We've got brand new head bolts. You're not supposed to reuse any of the bolts. They're torqued to yield, like I was saying earlier. One time deal, so we'll get new head bolts in there. You gotta put oil on the threads underneath the heads, and we'll get those torqued down. All right, we're putting in the new bolts, lubing up the threads and under the head there. We'll get these run down. These things have a super weird torque sequence on them. If you see in my greasy book, I've been in there quite a few times, but it's kind of different from anything else. I'll show you guys over here. So you start in the very, most of your older stuff, you start in the center and work out both ways. So these, you're going to torque this one bolt right here. And then they're going to have you start around the outside and walk a circle all the way around here until you get inside. And the first stage is 60 foot pounds. And then I believe you turn three different times at 90 degrees. If I remember right, you got 90 the first time, 90 the second time, and then you go 90 one more time. So you've got to go no more than 270 degrees plus or minus after your first uh, 60 foot pounds of torque. But it's really weird starting there. Like I say, that number 17 bolt gets torqued down first, and then you start out here in one, walk your way around the outside, and then come in. I don't know who thought of that, but apparently somebody's smarter than us. So. We're going to get these torqued down and we'll put, uh, I guess, the intake on. We got cleaned it up yet. And the rocker arm shaft. All right, we're rolling the motor back over. I got all the bolts torqued to 60 foot pounds, plus, we took them a full 270 degrees in three increments. You can see my paint lines there. Got them all looking the same. We're going to roll it over. Next thing we'll do, we'll put the intake on it. And then we'll get it torqued down and the rocker arm shaft will go on and the push rods before that actually. Um, and then we'll set the valves. I'll show you guys how to do that. Alright, so we got the getting ready to set the intake valve clearance. It's 7,000 on the um, intake and 25 on the exhaust. So the engine only six cylinders. You have to turn them in two positions to adjust them all. So right now we're set on number one, top dead center. We know that because there's actually a timing pin here. We just use a bolt and it goes in there. I don't know if you can see that. We actually put the number one cylinder on top dead center before we put the head and stuff on. So. We're going to set that sequence of valves in the book here as it says on these cylinders. Looks like one, two, and four, I believe. Then we'll turn it um, 360 and then put number six on top dead center. Then we'll adjust these other sets. So we're going to get that done. And then we'll put the ejector wires back on, and pour some oil on the top of it so it all gets lubricated. And then we'll put the uh, valve cover back on it. They're changing accessory drive stuff out here we got a new alternator new tensioner pulleys um, new idler pulleys a new ac compressor so new belt and it's gonna be fresh up there so and once we get that on still got to put the exhaust manifold i got a new turbo coming too we'll get the exhaust manifold on there 
All right, guys, the next day back here at the shop. Um, got tied up yesterday after I got the valves adjusted. Um, I did set the valve cover on overnight so we didn't get any dirt in it. I pulled it back off here this morning. One thing I like to do is always dump oil down and these help lubricate stuff. It runs down the oil pan eventually, but we got all the valves adjusted and set in here. Um, got all the injector wires back on. I'm gonna pour a little oil down on stuff this morning. Make sure she's got a little oil in it before it starts. Let's run down the lifter holes. Well, we're gonna get all that um, lubed up. And the next thing you gotta do is, um, I guess throw all these high pressure injector lines on. Got a new turbo over here I'll show you. Make sure we get everything coated here. That should be good. We've got a new turbo over here in the box. We've got um, some injector lines to put on, manifold, and then we'll get it set in the tractor. After we do that, we'll see if it fires up. All right, guys, I got the turbo back on, brand new, brand new Reman John Deere turbo, actually. Got the EGR cooler back on. Got anti-seize and all the bolts and everything. So the next person that takes this thing apart will have a little easier time. Anti-seize on everything. Turbo manifolds, EGR cooler bolts. John Deere makes it real fun. These two bolts under here, you can't do nothing but get a wrench on or a pain. But we got it, got the coolant lines on for the turbo, oil feed lines. Randy's box in the core up over there. And we about run out of parts. We've got uh, old head bolts and stuff. You're not supposed to reuse those. So we got all new bolts in it. I want to show you guys this here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get a light here. Do you guys see that gap in that piston ring right there? The book calls for 15 thousandths of an inch. I don't know if you can see that, but that is more like uh, two, 200 thousandths of an inch. So that was uh, another problem. That dust ate those piston rings up and made that gap wider. But that was uh, a big, another big factor to our blow-by situation. So we're going to get this dude hooked up on the forklift. We're going to go up in here and tidy a few things up, check some stuff over before we drop it in the hole. Um, I'm not going to bore you guys with showing how we drop that back in there unless you'd like to see that stuff you need to let me know so I don't know what you guys want to see or don't but you've seen us take it out so it's pretty much just the opposite we'll drop it in there we'll get everything hooked up get some fluids in it Randy's changed the filters we drained all the old fuel out got a new transmission hydraulic filters on it we've got uh, all the old fuel out of the tank draining out the transmission hydraulic fluids um, we still got to check the final drives yet, don't we, Randy? Yeah. The inner and outer final drives. Yeah. But we'll get the motor in there, get all the fluids in it, and hopefully fire it up here in a little bit. All right, we got the motor all stabbed back in it. We got oil in it, got all the lines hooked up electrical. If you can hear that right now, I got the fuel pumper running, trying to bleed the system out. Kevin's got this side all buttoned together, he thinks. Is that right? I'm hearing some funny noises over here. Like what? Gurgling? Is that your butt? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's probably the fuel tank. So we'll run that, we'll cycle the key a couple times because the fuel pump only runs for like 30 seconds on these if it doesn't call for any fuel. So it will fill those filters up. I'll shut the key off again. couple bolts in the hood. Cycle here one more time. Making a lot of 
lot of noise. We're going to pull up the engine oil pressure here. Are you ready? You watching for leaks? We're going to try our Got air in the fuel system. Let's see what other kind of pressures we got. Uh oh, I shut the key off. Wasn't smoking yet, was it? <laughs> Not getting not fuel. <laughs> She's all out of fuel. Pressures, engine pressures, display all. Make sure we're getting some fuel pressure. There we go. Got oil pressure. Alright guys, you heard it running. We got to everything checked out, it's looking good. Dated all the filters. We'll probably change the oil on it here after we break it in a little bit. We'll let it set at uh, probably a third throttle or so and let it break in a little bit. Get everything uh, checked out. We still got to put uh, belly pans on it. We got the hood and stuff put back on it. I think Kevin's going to give those a little paint job. But um, We've got some pretty cool plans for this tractor. We're going to take it out and uh, test run it down in southern indiana at uh, a certain person's place you may know of is a pretty popular youtuber i'll let you guys try to figure that out in the comments so but we're going to take it down and run it and test it out and make sure everything's good on it um we've got all the fluids changed in it we still got to check the air conditioner and charge it and i think that's about it i just gotta go over it and make sure all the grease fittings take and double check everything you never know what the militaries took loose or apart but but yeah we're planning on hollering down to southern indiana and do a little shakedown run on it so if you guys can figure out where we're going leave it in the comments below um if you guys like this stuff share and subscribe we're gonna have a pretty cool video coming up of running this with some other machines down there um hopefully coming up so if you guys like this stuff like subscribe and share and we will catch you on the next one